This video explains how to apply the head and tail functions in the R programming language. So without much talk, let's dive into the R code. In this video, I will show you several examples. And in the first example, I want to show you how to apply the head and tail functions to a data frame objects. And for this, we first need to create an example data frame, as you can see in lines two and three of the code. So after running these lines of code, a new data frame called data is appearing at the top right. And we could print the entire data frame to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line four of the code. So after running this line of code, you can see that our data frame contains 10 rows and the two columns x1 and x2. Now, in this case, our data frame is relatively small. However, especially in case of large data frames, the head and tail functions might be very useful. And for that reason, I want to show you how to apply these functions to our example data frame. So in line six of the code, I'm applying the head function to our data frame. And as you can see within the head function, we simply need to specify the name of our data frame. So in this case, our data frame is called data. And then after running line six of the code, you can see that only the first six rows of our data frame are returned. So in other words, the head function is by default returning the top six rows of a data set. We can also specify the number of rows that should be returned manually, as you can see in line eight of the code. So all I'm changing here is that I'm using a comma and then after the comma, I'm specifying the number of rows that I want to return. So in this case, I want to return four rows. So after running line eight of the code, you can see that another output is returned at the bottom. And this time we have returned only four rows. Similar to the head function, which is returning the top of our data set, we can also use the tail function to return the bottom rows of our data frame. And we can do that as you can see in line 10. So in this line, I'm applying the tail function to our data frame, which returns the bottom six rows of our data frame. However, we could also specify the number of rows that we want to return, as you can see in line 12 of the code. So after running line 12 of the code, only four rows are returned. So in these first examples, I have explained how to apply the head and tail functions to, to a data frame object. However, we can also apply the head and tail functions to a vector object. And this is what I want to show you in the next example, starting in line 14 of the code. And as a first step, we need to create an example vector by running line 14 of the code. And then in line 15 of the code, I'm printing our vector to the console. And as you can see, our vector contains 10 values. And if we now apply the head function to this vector object, as you can see in line 17 of the code, only the first six values of our vector object are returned. Similar to that, we can apply the tail function to return only the last six values of our vector object. It's also possible to apply the head and tail functions to list objects. And in order to show that, we first need to create an example list, as you can see in lines 21 to 24 of the code. So after running these lines of code, a list is appearing at the top right, which is called my list. And we can print the entire list to the RStudio console by running line 25. And then you can see that our list object contains four different list elements. And if we now apply the head function with a certain manually specified number of list elements that we want to return. You can see that only a sub list is returned at the bottom. So in this specific example, we have returned the first two list elements. And similar to that, we can once again apply the tail function as you can see in line 29. And in this case, the tail function returns only the last two elements of our input list. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage, I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. 
Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.